Hello, I'm Mabel Jong, and you're watching the World Healthcare Congress Interview Zone. I'm sitting here now with Dr. Robert Nessie, CEO of the Mayo Clinic Health System. Good morning. Good morning. Now, Dr. Uh, Nessie, we're talking a lot about evidence of value-based health care. Yes. Is evidence of value sort of a moving target because there's a lot of data out there and people have to come together to decide what the value is? Well, it's difficult not just because it's a moving target in regard to what value is, but people have different perspectives of value yeah. depending on where they are in the system. Right. So a community's perspective of value uh, might be uh, based upon how close the care is available to their community and perhaps the source of jobs in their community. Government's view of value might be access to services for patients who depend on them for care and a sustainable cost. Here at the Congress, you'll be talking a lot about that and how a system has to have five key components yes. in order to achieve this. Can you outline some of those for me? Yes, uh, it's, it's not just to achieve value. I think that the way the systems are moving, both contracting and in terms of expectations, if the system doesn't have these five fundamentals in place, the system will need to change or it will, it will not survive. So the first now is you must have a network of providers you are responsible with the new economic models for the care of someone from the time they become ill perhaps or even before they are you're responsible for their health through the hospital stay including the post hospital stay mm -hmm. for people who are bringing together large groups of people who are consolidating healthcare systems you have to align the purpose that's number two if you do not have aligned purpose for your work you may have one group of people who are concentrating on how to get more people in the hospital while another uh, provider group in that same system is incented by total cost contracts to keep people out of the hospital. Right. You must think about that formally and bring it together. Right. If you have the first two in place, then you really can start coordinating the care. Mm -hmm. But to do that, you have to have two other essential support functions. First of all, you have to align your financial model so that people can integrate and understand the financial limitations of their work to the whole rather than just their individual part of the system. And then finally, you must have actionable analytics. I think that is something we're all looking for improvement in. Well, now, how has life changed at Mayo? How much of this was already in place? How much have you had to increase your focus on? Uh, Mayo has been an integrated group for 100 years. But the idea of fully integrating community regional practice with destination care is an idea that goes back maybe five years. Mm -hmm. We have been working to bring together our community regional practices and our destination practice with one operating plan, one strategic plan, and one concept of value for the group. Mm -hmm. Now, has the communication, be, you had mentioned earlier that you need more communication with people outside of Mayo um, on the government level. Yes. Had, had you had those um, communication systems in place already or did you have to build that up fresh? Well, we certainly had the communication system in place. Our government affairs folks, obviously, those of us that are out speaking around the country, et cetera, are communicating all the time, we hope, mm -hmm. Mayo's values in our direction. But the communication now needs to be actually much more based around experience and data, not mm -hmm. just speakers. So we think connections with um, some companies like Optum, et cetera, uh, will allow us to gather information in regard to value mm -hmm. and then be able to communicate to people with real-time analytics in terms of Mayo Clinic's effectiveness. Now, we had um, the administration roll out the public exchanges. Yeah. Uh, a lot of information was gleaned from that, although a rough start, um, the government says they did hit their target. Mm -hmm. How is Mayo viewing that, and what have you learned to prepare for the private exchange rollout? Sure. So as Mayo looked at the Affordable Care Act as a whole, really it helps to think about that as reform to improve access to care, and provide insurance, public or private, mm -hmm. for people who didn't have it. Think about it that way, and the, the technological issues really then get to your point. In the end, people signed up, so there obviously was a need. Mm -hmm. Mayo does not see that really as care reform, but what's needed right now urgently, particularly in Medicare, is to have that system evolve so that it is now aligned with and in sense value in care 
rather than volume of services. So what we're really hopeful for now is with the exchange model, particularly private exchanges, and I frankly think Medicare Advantage is a form of private exchange, you can now put a care model in and align it with the with the uh, needs of patients and the people who pay their bill for value. That's coming, mm -hmm. but that is really something that is a responsibility of provider groups and insurers and others working together uh, within the new framework of private exchanges. Okay, you did mention um, Medicare specifically. Yes. There was some, there is some new data about specific groups of physicians that did receive the bulk of payments from Medicare. Yes. Uh, was that an accurate picture of what's to come in the future, or will those numbers shift? Well, the, the pilots, which is what you're referring to, which showed benefits to folks, um, what's in, interesting in those pilots is that I believe all the groups actually improved okay. their delivery of care, certainly some of their quality metrics. There were some hurdles for them in terms of uh, savings and some other things. I, I think we're talking about something different. This is a realignment now of Medicare to say, no, you know, we're not doing holdbacks and bonuses and things. We're going to pay you and we're going to figure out how to work with you regarding value and outcomes of care rather than to pay you based on just volume of services. A fundamental shift. Medicare needs to go there. We're anxious to help with that. Okay. And another message you may have for attendees at the conference this well, year? I think in times of turmoil, it's kind of hard to see, but this is a really exciting time to be in healthcare. Lots of changes coming, lots of opportunities, lots of work in the areas of innovation. So it really becomes a matter of saying, let's keep the faith, let's think about the future and realize that we're on a path through to what I believe would be a better alliance system. Okay, we're going to leave it on that very positive note. Thank you, Dr. Nessie. You're welcome. And I'm Mabel Zhang. Thanks for watching.